Here, I'm in a custom student response activity that I've just created. It has one page asking for the student to write about what they did over the holiday break using the text editor. And another page asking them to draw on a winter scene something they enjoyed doing during the winter months using the draw editor. You'll find the option to turn on the feedback loop on the lesson details section of our authoring tool. You can find that here in the left navigation panel. I'll select a subject area for the lesson. It's important to note that this will determine which subject area the lesson will belong to when you assign to any one of your students. I'll go with ELA for this activity. Then provide a short description for your lesson. After that, you have the option to select a level, grade, and state standards for your activity as well. As you'll see, the feedback loop by default is turned off. Simply clicking on will turn on the feedback loop. It's also important to note that you'll want to be sure to set that to on prior to assigning the lesson to your students. Once a custom student response activity has been assigned to a student, the feedback loop toggle will be disabled and will not be able to be changed. I'll now go ahead and save this activity and exit to home. You'll assign your custom student response lesson with the feedback loop on just like you would any other lesson. Go to your Lessons tab on the top menu bar. Be sure to use the subject dropdown for the subject area you selected for the lesson. Click on the lesson card to select it and then click Assign. Simply go through the three steps to assign your lesson to the student or students you'd like it to go to. As always, we recommend choosing to save with custom tags. Now, from a student's login, after assigning a custom student response lesson to a student with the feedback loop turned on, the student will see the lesson as they log into Vizzle and can complete the lesson as they would any other assigned lesson. Let's play this one demo lesson with the feedback loop on that is assigned to the student. Here the student will click to add their response. Then they'll click apply to add their text and then submit their answer. Then they can turn the page and then click to do the other activity. This one is with our draw editor, so I'll go ahead and just draw a snowman on here. Again, clicking to apply, and then click to submit. Look at their reinforcer. And then when they click the page, the end of activity reward. When the lesson is completed by a student with the cell select theme, the lesson is grayed out so that they cannot select it again and has a banner stating that it's under teacher review. The next time the student logs in, the lesson card will not be displayed unless the teacher reviews the lesson and has selected for the student to make revisions. For all the other student theme options, the lesson will not be available to the student again unless the teacher does choose to have the student make revisions. Now that the lesson has been completed, I'll go to my teacher login and then to the student's profile to view his data tracking. Notice there's an exclamation mark next to the student's tab at the top of my Vizzle screen, noting that a student has completed an activity with the feedback loop on. When I click on the student's dropdown, I will see a feedback loop icon next to any student who has completed those activities to let me know whose lessons I need to review. I'll select my student counter to review his lesson. Since these lessons have a custom student response, they do not collect right wrong data and will not display on the data cards on this data overview screen. You can view the student responses, however, by going to the review and feedback section using the left navigation panel. Under the lesson name column, you can click the lesson to view the student's responses. At the bottom of the screen, you can select the page you'd like to view, and then near the top right, click View Answer to view the student's submission.
Because typing a comment will trigger the need for the student to make a revision, only type a comment if you want a student to make revisions. We do plan to add the option to share a comment even when you do not want the student to revise their work, but that currently is not built in the platform. Here on this first page, I would like the student to revise his response, giving me more details. So I'll add a comment in the comment section. Again, it's important to state that you should only comment when a revision is needed. Once your comment is complete, click Apply. Then I'll go to the second page, click View Answer. I see my student's answer here. I do not want the student to revise their response, so I'm not going to leave a comment. Once you're done reviewing each page, you can click on the status box to adjust the status. Since I do wish the student to make a revision, I'll choose Under Revision. This will make the lesson active again for the student. There are no, no lessons listed to review for this student. To show the revision process for the student, I'll again log in as the student. Here you'll see the lesson is once again active for them, and they just need to click to play the lesson. The student will only see the pages the teacher commented on for revision and then share those comments as you see here. After reading the comments, the student can close the comment box to make their revisions. Student will click to add their response and then they can go ahead and add the additional details. Again, the student will click apply to add their text and then click submit. Now going back into my teacher account, I can again look at the student's revision. There's that exclamation mark showing I have a revision and in the student dropdown, the feedback loop icon shows up next to any student who has a revision for me to look at. I'll click on the student's name, again Connor, and then click on review and feedback to look at his revision. Under the lesson, I'll see there's a revision section to expand. As this bounces back and forth between the student and teacher, you'll see each revision listed. I'll click on the revision, which opens the lesson, and I can again go through the process of clicking on a page to view it using the View Answer button. You'll notice we've placed your most recent comment to the left so that you can see what you said to the student. Remember, if no additional revision is needed, do not comment. A comment triggers the lesson needing to be revised by the student. Since this looks much better, I'll accept this submission and just close the view. Then clicking on the status button, I will select Review Finished and Save. To look at previously reviewed custom student response details or make a note on one of those lesson plays, go to the student's data tracking tab under their profile and then click on the detailed report arrow. You can run your report based on whatever criteria you need and click Submit. Here I'm just going to make the most recent at the top. And again, you can expand the revisions and go ahead and view each of those here. Or over here, you can add a note. Just click Submit to add your note. And then when exporting that information, either as a CSV or as a PDF, there you'll see your note will be added in the report. We hope you enjoy this great new feature that Vizzle has to offer, and please don't hesitate to click on the chat bubble to ask for additional help. Happy Vizzling!